the restart. So last time I uh, could not finish all the kind of materials for the attention. Uh, so I will uh, the finish this part and then we move to CTC. Um, So the Monday lecture, I was explaining about the, the how transformer uh, the change the kind of uh, the performance uh, in speech recognition, and then uh, the uh, it's actually not the end of the the competition. Uh, after that, the Google uh, proposed the uh, the architecture called conformer. So I will first explain this the, the conformer. And the recently, the, our group actually also proposed that the, uh, the work called the branch former. So we will also explain it. So first, uh, um, conformer. Yeah, it's uh, there are a lot of the, the something former. So conformer is one of them, but it's actually quite uh, the strong and widely used in speech processing. Originally proposed in speech recognition, and then it, now it's actually used in the many of the speech processing applications. Conformer actually uh, the, has a, uh, the, uh, quite kind of a, uh, important scheme to capture the, uh, the two other uh, information, uh, which is very kind of appropriate for speech modeling. One is the global information. So what kind of a global information? Uh, the, uh, one is global information and the, uh, the other is the local information. And what kind of uh, the global information you can imagine uh, from the speech we, we have to capture? Local would be like a phoneme or some kind of other uh, information that is changing quite kind of uh, the, the rapidly, right? Global information in speech, what would it be? Yeah, speaker information, uh, anything else? Yeah, emotion, topic, semantic, syntactic information, which is quite important actually. So uh, of course the primary, I would say important part is local because we have to understand you know, what are the sound uh, that is kind of pronunciated. But uh, the global is another kind of important part. So this is not only for speech recognition, uh, the TTS, speak, uh, the speaker uh, recognition, speech summarization, speech translation, all kind of speech application, this uh, combination of the local and the global uh, is quite important. And then uh, conformer is try to uh, make use of both. Global information can be captured via self-attention, which uh, as you might remember, it actually has the, the almost all passes. Uh, to kind of capture the uh, the the, uh, the old frames in sentence and so on, right? And the uh, local information uh, the can be captured by uh, the, any other models, but the uh, the combination of neural network is actually good at this. So uh, conformer is actually try to kind of combine this local and the global information by using a different model architecture. And this is uh, the originally proposed in the, the RN transducer. But this uh, the, the the architecture itself is quite kind of uh, the, the powerful and it can be applied to the other architecture, including the attention based ASR and the CTC. Okay, so uh, the, let's check the uh, the conformer uh, the architecture, uh, which is actually the the extension of the transformer. So this is just a review of the transformer architecture. Which is that especially in the encoder, uh, we using the uh, the multi set self attention, uh, the field forward neural network, uh, residual connection, uh, positional embedding, and the CNN down sampling and so on that we kind of uh, ex uh, the, the studied last time, right? And the this block is actually repeated several times, like a twelve years or eighteen years and so on. This block is actually extended. Eh? I'm not sure people can check it, but actually this part is almost identical. 
there is a uh, the different kind of a block uh, the, the uh, layers here. Uh, one is the uh, the convolution layer, and the other is the feed forward neural network layer. So basically, uh, the, yeah, that's a kind of a combination of what we know. But uh, this combination was uh, the, turned out to be very important, very effective. Especially this convolution part is again, you know, taking the local, uh, the, uh, the information, uh, and then they, they try to kind of capture uh, the important speech uh, information. There are several minor other uh, difference like a relative positional encoding and additionally having a feed forward neural network here. So this is also called macaron kind of uh, the, the, the how to say the the uh, the, uh, the uh, pushing the, the macaron like architecture in the feed forward neural network. So this kind of a three uh, the the uh, extension uh, of the uh, the from the transformer. So it's not very big changes, right? Just you know, adding some kind of existing known uh, the architecture and then making it as a as a one big block. By the way, the the question in general, which one is having a more parameters in this block and this block? It can be obvious, but uh, of course, right side, right? Actually, that uh, the the this macaron part, the feed forward part, actually increase the model parameters quite a lot. So the uh, conformer generally have a twice more uh, the, the, uh, parameters uh, than the, uh, the transformer. So this is also another reason, but anyway, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the conformer uh, the extension, we usually have a very good uh, the performance improvement. And then uh, the, given this kind of approaches, our group also actually studied uh, uh, the, some kind of alternative uh, to the other uh, conformer, which we call it the branch former. And uh, this is uh, the basically same uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the concept. Uh, that we the, try to use both global local architecture, but uh, instead of uh, the combining this cascadery, we actually try to use the the, uh, the global and the local uh, the architecture in the kind of parallel manner, branch manner, and then uh, the, we actually uh, the call this approach a uh, branch former, which uh, the, the it's the actually the here in the uh, the the, uh, the market, uh, the, the self attention can capture the the the, uh, the global uh, the information and the uh, local. A part is actually combined by the, uh, the, the uh, field of the neural network and the convolutional uh, neural network. And then we uh, the intended to design this architecture because having a kind of neural network to be uh, the cascadery, uh, the, the combining would become a kind of a, uh, the neural network architecture itself very deep, right? This one is actually from here to here. It is obvious that it is very deep, right? Although this has a kind of a several kind of a, the, the, the residual connection to kind of mitigate this issue, but still this is very deep. And it's actually turns out that the conformer is a little bit more difficult to optimize than uh, the transformer. But once we find a very good optimization hyperparameters, conformer is working very well. well. So we want to kind of uh, the, the avoid this issue. And then I uh, came up with this kind of uh, the, the branch architecture. And it actually turns out to be uh, quite kind of powerful. And also the training uh, optimization is uh, very stable. So this approach, branch former, recently also the extended to uh, the deal with the fusion part here, uh, e-branch former, is actually uh, getting quite good performance. And many actually systems are used, uh, starting to use this e-branch e former. By the way, this branch former is uh, the proposed by the Ethan uh, there, <laughs> the sitting one of the TA. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the, with this kind of branch former, we actually could get a uh, reasonable performance. So we have shown some kind of a competition uh, with the, the giant uh, the companies, right? And then uh, this is actually the with the branch former. So uh, the from until the Again, you know, until the Google uh, getting the spec augment, uh, the the this uh, the the uh, libre speech benchmark is around eight percent. After spec augment, uh, that uh, we are kind of in the phase of uh, the, the fighting the, this kind of a number in the around five uh, percent. Conformer is actually quite a big changes, 
but uh, uh, the 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 e branch trauma is actually uh, the the improved performance. This is a, one of the first results that the the outperforms conformer, uh, the, based on the uh, the new architecture. So it doesn't use any external uh, the data and so on. Same kind of a comparison, but the branch trauma is uh, the, actually reaching the best performance uh, currently. Also now that we have several other architecture that are proposed, but the e branch trauma is regarded as one of the best performance architecture in speech recognition. Okay, so uh, the, now that the, I will move to several kind of discussions uh, that are given uh, today's, uh, the, uh, today and the, uh, Monday's lectures. So first, uh, transformer versus uh, the uh, LSTM, we already have our, uh, the, we already have our, uh, the, the good kind of improvement uh, in the BLSTM, uh, 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 the transformer from BLSTM. But I actually uh, observed uh, the, this change. I actually experienced uh, this change. I'm sure several, most of the people here already, you know, after the transformer error, right? But I am actually experienced the BLSTM error and then a uh, transformer. So the, 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 I can actually mention some of my personal uh, real experience about it. Actually, my experience uh, that if we do similar effort, uh, BLSTM is actually getting similar performance to transformer, at least for speech equation tasks. However, the, the most difficult part in BLSTM is that the parallelization. And the one epoch actually takes uh, the, if, uh, the three times uh, faster. It depends on the number of parameters, but the reasonable uh, the, the amount of parameters and the, if we compare the BLSTM and the uh, transformer. So it actually takes the, uh, the, the three times faster. This actually changing the many things because we can wait. We can actually tune the hyperparameter, optimization hyperparameter, uh, and so on. Uh, this kind of uh, the effort is uh, the, the quite kind of important. Also, as I mentioned, the model averaging is very important. And the model averaging is what's not very uh, well working in the, uh, the BLSTM uh, because of the kind of uh, the, the LSTM, the parameter dynamic range is very different. And sometimes averaging is uh, harmful. But the transformer is mostly based on the feed forward neural network. And we can safely uh, the taking the model averaging. So due to that, uh, uh, we actually get uh, quite a uh, good uh, the performance uh, the based on the transformer. That is actually my experience. Um, it can be uh, the, the nowadays, you know, obvious what people may not care so much about the BLSTM, uh, uh, but uh, the uh, still BLSTM is actually quite powerful and the several application we are using it. Uh, but the difference will be the polarization. And after the and before the transformer, I also changed my mind. Uh, before that, uh, I was actually thinking that uh, we do not try to tune the parameters, opti optimizers as much as pos possible because this is painful, right? Instead, you know, try to kind of more focusing on the architecture and so on. But after the transformer, we always have to tune the hyperparameter, uh, optimization hyperparameter. So this actually changed over my mind. And before that, I didn't usually kind of ask the people, I, I didn't do by myself to tune so much. Uh, so uh, this kind of uh, the, uh, the information uh, the, the is actually changing my mind. And then, uh, the, so this is uh, another thing. Some, again, without tuning, we are not sure uh, your kind of new architecture is really kind of useful or not. So please do not give, give up, you know, with some kind of bad result, uh, without the tuning the, uh, the uh, optimization hyperparameter. It's, the, 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 it's additional step, but otherwise uh, we couldn't fully really kind of utilize our new models and so on. So this is also one kind of uh, the suggestion. So, but it is difficult because speech means that we need to have our uh, the search of the optimization hyperparameter and then I uh, find it. The, the, the branch former also originally that uh, we need to have several tuning and then finally we get the kind of better performance and the conformer. Yeah, that's the uh, Ethan can uh, mention many of the kind of stories about it. 
Okay, so next, uh, the, I didn't talk about the uh, language model at all because I mentioned that, you know, attention-based SR including the language model effect, right? However, uh, this is actually uh, one uh, the interesting difference with the HMM-based approaches, which is at least this kind of a pure formulation we cannot train the model uh, the only with the text data. In the HMM-based approaches, it, the, the equation is complicated, but we can split the uh, language model part and the acoustic model part, right? And please remember, language model part, there is no observation, which means that we can train the model with large amount of text data. Which one is more data, only text data and text and speech data, pair data. Of course, text only data, right? Which has a tons of the, the, the resources. So uh, attention-based ASL, it actually doesn't have a pure uh, language model effect. And then if we try to incorporate it, we have to kind of train the both pair data or some kind of uh, the, uh, the, the ad hoc ways to uh, the combine the language model score which is uh, we call shallow fusion. That, by the way, the shallow here means that there are some more kind of a tight integration, uh, like kind of a combined the language model inside the neural network of the attention-based SR, and then uh, the fine tune or something, which is people call it deep fusion. And this one is shallow fusion because there's such, no such kind of integration part. Uh, but this uh, the approach is very simple. We just multiply them. But it, it can have a kind of a scaling issue of the probability. In these cases, we usually have a scaling parameter here. And then by controlling them, we can actually reduce the, uh, the effect of the language model, or we can increase the effect of the uh, language model and so on. So this uh, the, the approach is uh, the, the, uh, the quite widely used. However, compared with the, uh, the, the HM-based approaches, there is no theoretical justification. This is just a geometric mean. And actually, you know, the counting the, uh, the, uh, the uh, W twice, this is usually cannot be obtained from the, uh, the our kind of map decision theory. So this is actually ad hoc approximation or uh, the, uh, the we may also uh, the regard it as a, again, geometrically mean or something like that. So it is, uh, not theoretically well motivated, but it's quite widely used. By the way, uh, this actually approximation has an issue. This means that we actually have a language model effect twice. And this is actually sometimes harmful. And then there are a lot of kind of studies to actually try to remove the effect of the language model, especially in the attention side. We don't want to kind of double count the language model effect. So some people actually try to kind of subtract the language model effect in the encoder decoder part, and then try to kind of purely using the shallow fusion language model. So this uh, technique is called the residual uh, language model and so on. This is a little bit advanced to topic, but this uh, the approach comes from the fact that this actually uh, way is not theoretically bounded, uh, the, uh, the, the founded. So uh, the, we need some kind of, we, this is based on some approximation, and we need some adjustment and so on. But uh, this the residual uh, the language model uh, subtraction is really important. Uh, and uh, many of the kind of uh, the speech recognizer, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the product uh, by Google is actually uh, based on these approaches. So this means that this shadow fusion is something wrong. Okay, uh, the, and then last part, uh, and this is actually also a very important concept. So I want to explain. This is not only for the uh, the, uh, the attention. Even RN translator, this problem happens. Is that the teacher forcing? So uh, remember that the, we actually using this kind of factorization form, right? And then uh, we can train the model based on this factorization form. And then we have a history here, right? During the training, 
we know the history. We know the kind of entire history, right? So we can just use them. However, during inference, during beam search, can we use the ground truth history? Of course not. We don't, because we don't know the, the, what is ground truth, right? So that's why we are doing a speech recognition. So, so there is a big mismatch during the training and the inference and so on. And the many of, actually, attention-based encoder-decoder, theoretically, there is not so many approximation, right? There's no conditional independence assumption to uh, the, the derive this one. And uh, to use the attention, uh, instead of fully kind of using the observation uh, the, the other condition, uh, we may have some model level approximation, but we again, we don't use any conditional independence assumption. So which is very good. But uh, I say that mathematically, one of the biggest approximation uh, that, that conducted in the attention-based encoder-decoder is this uh, teacher forcing part. By the way, uh, there are, of course, you know, uh, okay, if, if that is approximation, why not we can replacing this part to be uh, the, the predicted history? This is actually fine. This may be probably sometimes better result than the ground truth. However, this actually uh, making the training very slow. So if we have a kind of a correct uh, the, the answer in the history, and then problem becomes easier so that we can actually train this model uh, quickly. So it's actually benefit of the, uh, the using this approximation, teacher forcing. So some people actually using, you know, until the, some point uh, using the teacher forcing and then later that using the other uh, predicted history and so on, which might be kind of improve the performance and so on. There are a lot of techniques uh, developed for this kind of areas uh, and so on. But anyway, teacher forcing is not the bad approximation, especially this attention training is very difficult. So providing the kind of ground truth as a history as a guide is not a bad idea uh, practically. Okay, so I uh, think uh, that's it from the attention-based SR. And I just want to summarize that, uh, again, attention-based SR doesn't have a, uh, any other condition independent assumption and very beautiful. Uh, by the way, this is so beautiful so that I actually started to use the, the attention-based SR uh, faster that I kind of found this method. Uh, but the, uh, the, there are a couple of issues like uh, uh, the the uh the teacher forcing is one issue and uh, also attention weight especially cross attention is very flexible uh, which is not uh, the appropriate for the model uh modeling for speech uh, processing speech recognition and so on so that the uh the other people other method uh, method like ctc and the RNN transducer is other widely other used as an alternative to attention-based ASR. Okay, that is from the attention-based ASR and the, any questions? So, okay, now I move to the another one, CTC. Um, CTC actually has a lot of explanation I did, right? Especially try to have a connection with the HMM so that the, most of the part is actually review. Uh, and some of the part is just more like you know, tips or technical kind of details about the CTC. And then I also explain about the some advanced CTC techniques. Okay, so uh, this is the review of CTC. I hope people just remember it, but I just want to kind of recap some of them. Uh, we introduced the Planck symbol, right? so that we can adjust, adjust the links. And the, uh, with that, we can actually find the, uh, the define the alignment variable. Alignment variable is usually same length without uh, the input feature, right? Okay, you still remember that, right? And then similar to the HMM, alignment is actually uh, the quite other, the, the, the many variations. It's actually exponential. so. We have to uh, the consider the summation over all alignment, right? Uh, however, which is very difficult, but fortunately we have a dynamic programming to actually uh, consider all possible alignment. 
to get the likelihood of, or even get the gradient. That is what uh, we actually learned. And the I will add uh, the uh, also I also we also explained about the how to uh, represent the uh, alignment and the features are based on the trellis, right? So just to remember that you know uh, the, the many cases uh, it can be starting from the blank symbol or uh, initial symbol and then reaching to uh, the end of the symbol or a blank symbol. And then uh, we can skip the uh, the blank symbol, but if we have a conjective uh, the, the token, we cannot actually skip the blank symbol. So that we try to distinguish this one is the uh, same E, uh, the single E or the repetition of the E, okay? So given that, uh, let's discuss about the this part, which is you know to providing the probability for the the CTC, right? And after this one was given, we are using this kind of a, a manner to compute the whole entire uh, loss and so on. And I didn't really explain about this part, but this is actually very similar to the encoder in the attention based approaches or even acoustic modeling part. What it is doing is just every kind of a time stamp, we try to predict the token. That's it. Of course, we don't know the kind of alignment. So this part is controlled when uh, the, the, we, during the training uh, with the CTC loss, which consider all possible parts. During the inference, we just using a beam search or grid decoding. So this part is completely uh, the same as the attention-based encoder, the, uh, the encoder in the attention-based models or acoustic models. So this means that uh, we can just uh, the, the repeat uh, what we have learned. We can use a feed-forward neural network. We can use the, the convolution neural network. We can use the, the BLSTM, or we can use the transformer, conformer, branch former, and so on. Uh, the, actually, the, the, uh, the, this kind of evolution directly uh, the affect the CTC performance as well. After we have uh, this kind of uh, the, the encoder uh, the, the representation, what we will do is, again, we will get a kind of this kind of probability, which means that we're using a softmax, right? And to do the softmax, we just converting this hidden state to the vocabulary size, plus one. What plus one comes from? Blank, yes, correct, yes. So basically that's it. And then the, we can actually make a, a, the, a, the CTC. It is very actually simple. And then loss function part is a little bit complicated as you are doing in the, uh, the uh, you finished in the, the coding assignment three, which is you know at the for the backward. But uh, fortunately, many of the uh, current uh, the, the neural network frameworks actually providing the CTC loss. So you guys actually don't have to implement it by yourself. You can just call the uh, the, uh, the function. But for this particular uh, the coding assignment, we want you guys to understand it. So uh, we put the part of the uh, the for the backward algorithm uh, in the uh, as a coding assignment and so on. So basically that's it. And then uh, the, we can actually get to the CTC, uh, the, the, uh, we can basically uh, the train the CTC uh, very easily. So uh, the compared with attention-based encoder decoder, it sounds simple, right? We don't have a cross attention. We don't have a, a, a decoder. We don't have to care about the autoregressive uh, the, the, uh, generation. We just have an encoder. We just put the CTC loss function. That's it. Okay. Uh, the, however, uh, it actually has uh, several tips which can be important when you guys are working on the other uh, town project. So, so I will explain a bit, uh, little bit about it. I think uh, that I can, you know, uh, the skip many of the explanation here 
But uh, as you guys may remember, uh, CTC actually has some constraint. One of the biggest constraint is that input must be longer than the output. So we have a um, Maybe I can move to this one. This is a kind of a typical uh, the CTC path. And we have a skip uh, the here, right? Uh, the, 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 like this one. We have a skip in the, sorry. Yes. We have a skip here, but we don't have a skip like this, right? We don't have a skip like this, right? which means that the, to go up, we always have to consume one frame, right? This means that uh, if the output length is longer than CTC, uh, than the input length, we actually cannot reach to the end. And in this case, actually, we cannot train the CTC model. So this is actually uh, important, uh, the other, the, the, uh, the, the uh, the limitation of the CTC, the uh, the input length must be always uh, the longer than output. Fortunately, speech recognition satisfy this condition. What about TTS? TTS actually cannot satisfy this condition. So TTS is not used for, uh, CTC is not used for TT, the TTS so often. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to kind of faking it, like, you know, upsampling the, uh, the, the token part uh, and then making uh, it satisfied with a CTC condition and then uh, to try to uh, use a CTC yeah, the, for the, uh, the speech uh, the synthesis, TTS. There are such kind of techniques exist, but generally no. Okay. And uh, this means that the, if it's getting shorter, uh, we actually uh, the, the still uh, we can find this path. But the, if getting shorter and shorter, uh, there is a program. And t equals three and this s e e case uh, first uh, the short quiz. Okay. And uh, maybe you can also open the short quiz too. Uh, what we can do is at the same time. Right? Yeah, please do the other, uh, 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 try the both the short quiz one and the short quiz two. Short quiz one is uh, the similar to this case, S E E, and the short quiz two is actually the one character is changed from E to A. Okay. Um, so the answer, first answer, is uh, S E E case, right? <laughs> so I forgot which one is which. Uh, no. Uh, Actually, we cannot uh, uh, the, the reach the uh, the end of the uh, the, the symbol because uh, that or uh, the uh, because uh, the uh, we cannot uh, the the uh, the pass the blank symbol here, so we actually uh, the, have to go through this one, this one, and this one. Even character length is three, if we have a consecutive uh, character, and then we actually have to go through the blank, and if, uh, the, we actually have to have our additional uh, the, the length to satisfy this kind of a condition. While if we are not using the, uh, if uh, this is not the consecutive, uh, character, and then we can actually skip this. So in these cases, we have a path 
from this one to this one to this one. And then actually uh, the, we can reach the, uh, the end of the sentence and then we can compute the loss. So it's not very simple. Actually, we also have to consider the, uh, the consecutive uh, the, the, uh, the tokens and so on. But generally, please remember that the CTC is not well defined if the input length is uh, the, the nearly shorter than the, uh, the, the output uh, length. And this is actually one of the big uh, the, uh, uh, the tips. So I just want to kind of emphasize it. Now that uh, the, you guys are actually working on the TAM project and so on, some of them are working on the CTC or CTC attention and so on. And uh, uh, this actually quite often happens uh, when uh, we actually using the uh, data which is not uh, the well arranged. So most of the cases, actually speech is, uh, the speech input is uh, longer than output token. So most of the cases, uh, CTC, uh, the, uh, the condition is uh, the satisfied. So we actually don't care so much about the usual cases, but the, if, for example, you try to use a new data, if you kind of made a mistake in the data preparation, if you, for example, made a mistake or a little bit kind of a wrong uh, the parameter setting in the downsampling and so on, and then a CTC condition is not satisfied. And then what's happening? Actually, if many of the sentences doesn't uh, satisfy this kind of a condition, training becomes very unstable uh, because that we cannot use the full amount of data we have to use a data that only satisfying the CTC condition. So this is actually one of the quite other, the, the, other frequent other questions that we kind of accept. Uh, the, 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 your kind of our training is very unstable. And then some cases, you know, training is not kind of working at all. Uh, the, how to deal with that? This is a very typical question. Uh, we kind of, uh, the, the, uh, the, we received. And then in these cases, please check the output and the input lengths. And then if uh, there are some kind of issues uh, related to CTC related errors, mostly uh, by uh, fixing this part, uh, you can actually uh, solve this problem and so on. Okay. So this is the, uh, the, the one of the important tips in CTC. And the, another uh, the, uh, remark of CTC compared with attention-based encoder decoder is that output dependency. So remember that the, the, uh, the attention-based encoder decoder, we actually using a conditional independent, uh, we actually don't use conditional independence assumption at all, right? which means that we fully take care of the dependency of the output labels. However, CTC is actually uh, the using the conditional independence assumption here. And please look at from here to here. For me, it's a super big approximation. <laughs> they actually don't consider any history. So uh, this is actually making the problem simple but of course, in terms of the model, it is not great, right? Because speech has a dependency in the output token. Output token sentence has a dependency, right? So this actually has a super big assumption, and it actually has a pros and cons. First, you know, approximation is not always bad. Approximation is important for our engineering. This becomes our model simple, right? This is a big, quite big benefit of CTC. And the second part, I will explain later, inference actually becomes super fast by using this kind of particular condition. And another part is that we can combine the language model safety. This actually doesn't consider any history, right? Which means that we actually don't have a language model component. 
as I mentioned, attention based encoder decoder has actually language model component. And then if we combine it with the, the language model, it has some kind of uh, data conflict. And then the, we may need some kind of other uh, residual language model treatment and so on. But CTC doesn't have this. So CTC can actually safely combine uh, the large language models and so on uh, without any kind of other uh, 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 performance degradation and so on. So it's, you know, it that doesn't hold the, the language model. Uh, it uh, that sounds like a the, the disadvantage. But the, uh, by combining the external language model, it becomes uh, quite powerful. But this means that it's not fully end-to-end, -end, right? We're using the additional model and so on. So some people may call it the CTC is not uh, fully end-to-end, -end, which is, comes from this part. We already need to have some language model uh, to uh, the, the make the CTC to be working uh, reasonably. But of course, uh, this is approximation. This is a big advantage, and the performance is definitely dropped, unfortunately. And compared with the attention-based encoder decoder and RN transducer, CTC itself without language model, generally performance is worse. Okay, so I will also explain about this inference part. So uh, the, the CTC is actually uh, the getting the uh, inference in a very fast manner. So uh, the, we, CTC, by the way, very strictly try to solve the CTC with a kind of a considering the, uh, the, uh, the CTC rule and the language model. We need beam search, but actually uh, the, we can also uh, the, the use the greedy search. It's a kind of one approximation, but it's very powerful. Uh, greedy search, uh, the, uh, remember that we actually taking the Arg max every time step, right? And then let's do the CTC and do the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the greedy search uh, for this equation. This means that you know uh, that we first do the kind of uh, the the uh, the Arg max in the first time stamp, second time stamp to do the uh, the, the Arg max, uh, the the uh, last uh, the, the, uh, time stamp to do the, uh, the arg max. However, there is no dependency in the history, in the CTC. Actually, this arg max part can be independently uh, the, the, uh, the applied. And then, actually, this part is fully parallelized. So to uh, the, the, take the arg max in the second part, we don't have to uh, the care about the result of the first one because it doesn't depend on that. So mathematically, okay, right? Since it doesn't depend on that, we can actually, even we can change the order, which is fine because it doesn't depend. But uh, this property means that we can actually even parallelize the search part. So this is actually uh, the making of the, uh, the search very, very fast. Greedy search is already, uh, you guys think that it's very fast, right? Because it's just kind of a one time, one time to make some decision instead of beam search and so on. But this one is even faster because this part is parallelized. So this uh, the, the approach is also uh, the quite kind of important uh, in the recording. So due to that, the CTC is still using as uh, a powerful uh, the techniques. Uh, instead of having a complicated beam search or uh, the, the, the reducing the, uh, the having a, also additional uh, the, the computational cost, uh, we can actually parallelize and getting the result uh, very quickly. By the way, this nature uh, comes from the, uh, the, uh, the strong kind of conditional independence assumption. We actually removing the kind of autoregressive uh, nature, right? So this model is also called the non-autoregressive model. Not only for the CTC, or other kind of model, which has a kind of uh, the, the, uh, the weak dependency or less dependency or no dependency in the other uh, conditions, we can actually avoid the autoregressive uh, the, the generation, and we can actually parallelize the decoding part. So this kind of property is known, called non-autoregressive, and the CTC is one of the very powerful uh, non-autoregressive model in speech other processing.
Okay, so uh, the, this is about the basic of the CTC. The part of the, 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 the explanation is just reviewing it, but the, in addition, I kind of giving some of the, well, the tips of the CTC. And now I am moving to a little bit more advanced CTC technology. We still have time, right? Okay, good. So that I just want to recap that CTC has a conditional independence assumption, right? Which making the CTC very unique. However, the question, CTC really do not hold any token dependency in the model. What do you think? Mathematically, output label doesn't have a dependency, right? So this means that the CTC really doesn't hold any token dependency. Yes. Actually, the hidden state is quite dependent, right? And uh, it is not very explicitly uh, the, the uh, dependent, uh, but uh, hidden state have some already information about the phoneme or, or some other token already, right? And the neural network, what they are doing is gradually changing the representation from the lower layer, which is more like a, the, just a pure acoustic feature, having a more kind of a, the optimization. And then they, they're getting the, the hidden states to be more kind of meaningful representation. And the final one becomes just a phoneme. So intermediate representation actually has some phoneme information already, right? Of course, it is not easy to you know, fully visualize it, but definitely, Intermediate representation already has phoneme like information. And then after the self attention or BLSM or whatever, if we have such kind of uh, the dependency uh, considered in the model, actually this uh, the part implicitly has uh, the context information. So output label. Label, uh, the, in terms of the explicit output label or mathematically, CTC doesn't have a conditional, uh, the, uh, CTC uh, the, doesn't have a label dependency, but actually inside the model, uh, they, this, they actually can somehow hold the, uh, the, uh, the uh, label dependency implicitly, and then it's not completely independent. This actually uh, the, the having uh, the turns out that the output has a quite kind of a consistent uh, the, across the kind of a all frames and so on. So this is actually uh, the, the, uh, the interesting part of the neural network uh, architecture. You know, mathematically in the last output form is completely explicitly independent, but actually internal it has some kind of dependency. By the way, this part is of course boosted after the transformer. So before the CTC becomes the, the transformer based the, the implementation, BLSTM or uh, convolutional neural network, it's actually weak in terms of getting the kind of uh, the, the hidden state uh, context of information. But after the transformer, this actually becomes very strong. And this is one reason that CTC after the transformer, it actually becomes very powerful. So some people have some kind of a mention that no, no, CTC is very weak model. We should use the, uh, the, uh, the attention or we should use the RN transit because CTC doesn't have a hold uh, the, uh, the label dependency. It's not completely true anymore based on our strong uh, neural network encoder. Is that what we want to do? Everything? Yes. Okay, cool. So this is actually implicit part. Uh, However, there are recently very cool direction of trying to actually still implicitly, but a little bit more explicitly uh, in, uh, the, uh, the, the, the putting the information uh, about the context. So I will explain this kind of technique. It's uh, called the intermediate CTC and the self-conditioned CTC. And the uh, intermediate CTC is actually putting the CTC loss in the middle and the final part. We basically setting the same CTC loss or maybe use a diff different losses, 
uh, depending on the our kind of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the design and so on. But the important part of this work is that uh, putting the CT heroes here means that this hidden state is now quite kind of a similar information to the phoneme, right? Otherwise, we cannot predict the, uh, sorry, not token, not phoneme, token, right? Otherwise, we cannot predict the token, right? So without this, this can be a more like a, uh, the, the general uh, the, the, uh, the hidden state, but by putting the loss here, uh, the, this becomes more uh, the explicitly, still not fully explicit, but more explicitly uh, the providing the information of the token here, right? And the later part is self-attention or BLSTM, whatever, which has a kind of interaction. So this is actually a way to uh, the break the, uh, the conditional independence assumption in CTC. And this is actually also the, the techniques uh, developed in CME, by the way. And the next approach is actually extension of the, this intermediate CTC, which is after we predict the, uh, the, after we have a kind of this branch and then getting the CTC loss to compute the, uh, the, sheet, uh, the output, uh, we actually feeding back this information here. And then just you know, adding or multiplying or uh, concatenated to the original features and so on. But this one is, you know, the, the, actually after the softmax, which is almost having the token information, right? By doing that, we can add a more explicitly including the, uh, the token information here. And then again, after that, we have our, uh, the, 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 the a transformer self attention or VSTM to consider the context information. So uh, the, this part is actually more explicitly consider the uh, the condition uh, the, the the label dependency in CTC. So this uh, self condition CTC and the intermediate CTC are actually ways to relaxing the conditional independence assumption of CTC, and actually this improve the performance of CTC a lot. So due to the kind of a technique of this uh, the, uh, relaxation of the conditional independence assumption and the strong uh, encoder uh, comes from the conformer uh, or branch form and so on. Now that the CTC and the RN transducer uh, attention-based encoder decoder, performance gap is getting smaller and smaller. And the last approach, uh, last section is uh, the, the uh, combination. So, uh, let's kind of review CTC and the uh, attention. The biggest difference is there's no other condition here, but there's a other condition here, right? However, as I mentioned in the attention part, attention, uh, the, the cross attention part is too flexible and sometimes very difficult to control. While CTC is hard alignment. So it's actually uh, the framework itself has a monotonic alignment. Uh, so there is no kind of a, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the flexibility issue of the assignment. Uh, so this is actually uh, one of the difficulties uh, that I had uh, faced on when I first implemented uh, attention-based encoder decoder. So attention-based encoder decoder, cross-attention is uh, very difficult to optimize uh, and very easily actually having this kind of a uh, wrong pattern which is not uh, the correct uh, for the, uh, the, the uh, speech recognition cases, right? And then the, uh, the, we actually want to uh, the solve this problem. Uh, and then the, there are a lot of other solutions, but the, our uh, the, the solutions is actually simple. So by the way, this one is also the uh, the, now they, they become to the, the one of the very famous technique in the end-to-end -end speech recognition. And this uh, the first author is also from CMU. Uh, the Suyo Kim, now she's in the meta. And uh, it is a work actually that uh, the, uh, the, I was at the company with Suyo was the, uh, the internship student. Uh, we actually uh, the, the, try to find uh, some simple solution, which is just kind of regularize this uh, the, the, uh, the hidden state uh, with CTC, that's it. We actually just hope that this regularization, making this part to learn more like uh, the, uh, the, the uh, monotonic alignment uh, 
And then the, the other data, uh, the, the, we just still want, uh, they wanted to use attention because attention has a level dependency is better than that. But uh, we just adapting the CT zeros and then uh, we using the March, uh, the, uh, the objective, March task learning of this kind of uh, uh, approaches. Uh, this is, by the way, not a perfect solution. This is just a regularization. I don't uh, the still force the, the monotonic alignment in the model level. But it was actually working quite well. Uh, this is actually uh, the pure attention model and the joint CTC attention model. Um, if we have a more epochs, uh, maybe attention can have a better, uh, the clear kind of attention curve. But uh, uh, the by using the CTC uh, attention uh, the the, uh, the multi task training we could actually uh, the mitigate the issue and even in the early stage we can get some kind of a clear uh, attention pattern we are very excited about this result and the next actually we try to think about fully the, the, the more kind of our, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the useful ways to solve these problems. Please look at this one. The CTC is just using other regularizer, right? And then we just discard the result, which is, we saw that it's not very kind of a useful uh, because CTC itself also doing the speech equation, right? Uh, the attention based encoder decoder also are doing the speech equation. So both are doing the, uh, the similar thing. So why not we consider to uh, that, uh, combine these two information? One side is you know the fully kind of solving the monotonic alignment issue. One side is uh, the good that considering the uh, the, the label dependency, right? This is a kind of a decoding approach that we uh, propose, which is the CTC attention joint decoding that is actually combined during the beam search, and it's a little bit advanced topic, so I don't explain the detail. But during the beam search, we basically kind of combine the score of the CTC uh, the, the, uh, and the attention. And that was almost perfectly solved the issue because this side, at least this output, doesn't have uh, the, the weird uh, the, 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 uh, the alignment issues so that we can actually safely uh, get the result, which doesn't have any kind of alignment issues and so on. We have a, actually quite a good kind of improvement uh, at that time. Uh, this is the attention uh, the model. And uh, just uh, the attaching the CTC rows, which I explained before, actually improve the performance. However, by combining the, uh, it in the decoding stage and during the beam search, we actually got a quite other large improvement and so on. And this other big improvement uh, comes from the kind of a, a, the regular attention pattern. Before combining the score, we often have a, this kind of pattern that I mentioned, I kind of uh, explained before, right? The, this actually has a, the same phrases happened three times. These are wrong uh, alignment pattern. And again, it doesn't happen at CDC. It would happen in attention. By combining them, we can actually uh, uh, the mitigate the issue uh, the, of uh, this kind of problem and so on. And the same for the another pattern, which is also, by the way, quite often happen. Uh, the, the beam search, it stopped <laughs> before uh, the, the reaching to the end. And uh, almost all kind of result becomes a deletion error. And this is also kind of clear uh, the wrong attention uh, the, the pattern which is uh, the well kind of uh, fixed by using the, uh, the combination of the CTC, uh, the attention-based approaches. So this, uh, the CTC attention is actually implemented in ESPNet. So this is uh, the, the very stable in terms of training, which uh, thanks to the kind of two losses, it's actually fast and robust. And the decoding result is not broken uh, based on the, uh, the, the attentions, uh, the crazy uh, result. Uh, but uh, this is not the only choice. Actually, as you can see that, you know, combining the two systems, right, two architecture, it's actually a bit complicated. Uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the, it's actually uh, the, the also requires the additional computational cost for both CDC and attention, right? 
So this is actually not the, the only choice, or well, I would say that many actually people also using a, a various solution for uh, the the uh, this kind of uh, the problem and so on. But this is actually quite uh, one of the promising solution, and many of the uh, the the the, uh, the framework, uh, the ASR framework is actually uh, the having this CTC attention, uh, the architecture and so on. So by the way, yeah, this is actually one big remark. I think some of you guys may also touching the, uh, the large language model and so on, right? It was not easy to control the language, right? Sometimes, you know, they kind of over-generate, uh, and sometimes it's too short, <laughs> and then we just using the temperature or uh, the, some other kind of hyperparameter to make the language. And the language model case is more difficult because the language cannot be, may not have a kind of a, a real kind of a correct language. But speech recognition cases, uh, the, it's clear, right? Uh, the, the speech and the corresponding text. So language should be some kind of language, right? So uh, this uh, the, 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 uh, the approach, uh, this kind of a, a priori knowledge is very important. So I'm very sure that you guys already may have some question probably uh, the, for uh, the, the, if you guys kind of do the attention-based encoder decoder, you guys may have this kind of a pattern and then you know your result is, for example, the the uh, the the word error rate is over hundred uh, due to the uh, the uh, why it happened by the way word error rate becomes the, the over hundred uh, which error will make the uh, word error rate uh, uh, over hundred insertion substitution deletion which one will make the word error rate over hundred yes yes insertion and uh, this is this is actually a very good example. <laughs> It's so many insertions. It's actually uh, the word error because over the hundred and so on. This case is uh, deletion is very large, right? So uh, the our kind of uh, the the the, the uh, assignment may also have a uh, the the part to check the result, right? And then where you actually have a way to check the number of insertions and the number of deletions. So if your result is wrong, please always check them. If the number of insertion is extremely large, or extremely, uh, the, uh, the number of deletions are extremely large, in these cases, probably uh, the first model may not be well-trained, or your kind of uh, the search, uh, the, the, the hyperparameter is wrong. So anyway, by checking the result, uh, we can actually understand uh, what error that we, that are happening. This is a very important remarks, and uh, some of you here may actually have uh, this uh, the experience. So, if you guys have some uh, the, the weird result, uh, do not only check the word error rate. Please also check the breakdown of the how many substitution error, how many insertion error, how many deletion error do you have. And also, if you the, have also the the, uh, the the access to the result, please also check the the error patterns and so on. The the, the ESPNet generally kind of producing the result, which is with this kind of information: how many insertion, how many deletion, and uh, which part of the word is insertion, which part of the the word is uh, sorry, token is deletion, substitution, and so on. Uh, please check them, and then you guys can see what's happening. And then you guys can find a way to solve this problem and so on. Okay. Um, we still have 10 minutes. Okay. I can try to kind of fix the uh, finish it. Uh, rest of the part. Huh? So uh, another approach that I also want to explain uh, with an extension of the CDC is uh, the mask prediction uh, based approaches. This is actually uh, one way to solve the CTC uh, without losing the uh, benefit of the normal to regressive nature. So first, uh, the, when I introduced the mask, uh, the, the, I also explained about uh, the, uh, the mask prediction, like for example, uh, the hiding some word and from the, uh, the, near, uh, the, the context of the word to predicting the, uh, the, uh, the the, the hided, uh, the hidden uh, the token, that is called uh, the mask prediction. And 
Actually, by combining this uh, the CTC and the mask prediction, we can actually uh, the consider the label dependency and also can uh, the, the avoid, uh, uh, we can also maintain the benefit of the non autoregressive nature. So that's uh, the, 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 uh, the, there are several techniques that are proposed, but one of the techniques is uh, called mask CTC. And uh, this I will try to uh, explain a bit more detail. So it's also very uh, interesting direction. So uh, this is a kind of a conventional uh, the encoder decoder, right? And then we have output and so on. And then now we also studied that you know CTC can be actually put as an additional loss here. That's it a kind of a, uh, the, the, the basic form of the CTC uh, attention architecture and so on. Uh, however, uh, we actually are making uh, this part uh, to be extended by using the iterative mask prediction uh, based uh, the decoding and so on. I will explain one by one. So first, this approach is two pass approaches. We do the kind of a two, uh, the, the, uh, the, the search. But uh, this search is actually uh, the, uh, the greedy search and the, uh, the, the non autoregressive parallelized search. So it, it's actually costed very small. So first pass, we just doing the CTC greedy search, no autoregressive. We can get the, the result the quickly, right? And then second pass, we feeding this kind of output to this kind of a special transformer decoder and then getting the result and so on. And how they are def defined, I will explain about it. So first, uh, uh, the, let's uh, the think about CTC, uh, the, the prediction, which as I mentioned, it is the, the considering the, uh, by considering the conditional independence assumption, it's actually quite error prone. And then uh, the, in these cases, for example, uh, the S and the A can be a kind of wrong, uh, the, uh, prediction and so on. And then in these cases, we first checking the, some kind of a confidence, which is if we check in the softmax uh, the activation, we can actually get the confidence. If the, the softmax is very peaky, then the, uh, the, it is very confident, right? And if the softmax is very kind of a, uh, the, the, uh, the, the wide uh, the tail, and then this kind of prediction is not very confident. We first check this confidence and then identify that which kind of token is uh, not uh, that they're confident in terms of softmax activation and so on. And then after that, we actually feeding this uh, part as a mask. We hide them. And then these are kind of more confident information, right? And this uh, the masked information is actually less confident. So by using this confident information to predict the masked information, so this is actually using the, the many of the NLP techniques like a BART and so on. And this is actually combining this kind of BART-based mask prediction with the other the CTC approaches. And then fortunately, if we have some kind of a, a better prediction, like this one is actually turns out that correct. But this one is wrong. But the, by using the context information and the uh, encoder information here, uh, we may recover these approaches. And then uh, this uh, the, 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 by uh, the iteratively performing this part, we could actually uh, consider to uh, the improve the performance uh, by using this kind of iteration and so on. Sounds like uh, computationally heavy because this is uh, the having the iteration, right? But don't worry about that because this part is fully self-attention, and also this part is actually also uh, doesn't depend. Output is doesn't depend on each other. So this part is actually non autoregressive performed. So this is having some additional iteration, but uh, the, by uh, the using this kind of architecture, entire framework is still non autoregressive. And the decoding part is not like a beam search. It is fastly uh, uh, predicting the uh, result and so on. So this is a one example of the, uh, the, the mask CTC. Actually, the first CTC result has a, a lot of errors. 
but by masking the uh, the uh, unconfident part and predicting from the kind of other uh, the confident information, we can actually uh, iteratively recover the better performance and uh, finally getting the uh, this part is actually correct. Uh, this part is correct and this part is remaining wrong. But uh, uh, this is actually another way to break the conditional independence assumption by using the masked language model and so on. Okay, so this is a, a, the, the, uh, the summary of the CTC. So CTC is the most simple end-to-end -end ASR. Uh, this is uh, the thanks to the conditional independence assumption. But uh, uh, due to the conditional independence assumption, it has a pros and cons that we actually uh, the, uh, the discussed before. And some people may think that no, no, CTC is an old technique. CTC is actually uh, the, due to the conditional independence assumption, it is not the state of the art. Partly, I agree, but I actually don't fully really agree this one. Due to the kind of strong encoder and due to the kind of a lot of techniques to relaxing the conditional independence assumption, CTC performance is actually getting better and better. And also due to the kind of very nice parallelization capability in the decoding, uh, the, the, the beam search part, uh, actually CTC is still powerfully used uh, or some of the application CTC is very necessary. So this is actually uh, the summary of the CTC part. And then I will move to the, uh, the uh, weekly assignment today. Uh, any quick question about CTC?